day. Thank you all for joining us for the new face of food live. This is an extension of the sectorial presentation for Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, the Honorable Floyd Green. Now, throughout the program, we want you to use the hashtag, hashtag new face of food. Again, the hashtag is new face of food to join the conversation online. So make sure that you use it and send to us all the questions that you may have. First up, we have some live music for you. And after that, the Honorable Minister and our experts will be sharing with you specific areas in the Agriculture and Fisheries Ministry and also the new direction of the sector, which is very important. We'll be discussing youth and women in agriculture and the best agricultural operations for you with the Honorable Floyd Green, Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries. Wave, Minister Green said, I can't see you that you're here. Blessings. Of course, this would not happen without you. <laughs> Sabrina Kane, Project Manager of the Fisheries and Management and Development Fund. Sabrina, you can wave to the people online. There we go. And also Khalil Brown, no stranger to this neck of the woods uh, animal nutritionist. Hello to you, Khalil. Thank you so much for joining us. Agriculture and fisheries is attractive and trust me, it is pretty much lucrative as well. It's youth and it's woman, and it is very much the way forward. We invite you to send all your questions again and your suggestions to us. And you don't want to miss the end of this show because it's all about farming over flossing with the man Yaksa himself coming up later on, all right? And we go all the way until 4.40 p.m. Now, before we hop into the conversation on the new face of food, we want to get you in the mood, in the vibe. So please join us right now on stage with the band, The Scallywags.
much, gentlemen. The band, the Scallywags, they'll be joining Yaksa later on. It is going to be vibe plus more right here. All right, so make sure that you continue using the hashtag new face of food as we have this discussion. And we don't have much time, so let's get right into it. As you all may know, we have had a cultural shift in the way agriculture and fisheries has been perceived. And now we have more young people interested in the sector and really realizing the opportunities and the benefits, of course, to the sector. We want growth, we want profits, and for sure we want innovation. So who better to tell us more about how we can get all of that than our minister, the Honorable Floyd Green. Floyd, first of all, congratulations on <laughs> our good you. presentation yesterday. Thank you, thank you very much, Debbie. And let me, let me just thank the team of the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries led by our permanent secretary, Dermot Spence. Um, I think everybody really pulled together um, as you know, it was my first sectoral presentation as Minister of Agriculture. So we really wanted to take some time to outline the vision, the new direction, and as we said, um, the new face yeah. of food. Right, so for persons who don't understand what it is that you mean by the new face of food, let's break down the acronym FACE for people. Yeah, so we, we, we're focusing the ministry on creating a market-driven research base uh, sustainable agricultural sector. So the FACE really stands for food security and I think it's very important that the primary goal of the Ministry of Agriculture is to secure Jamaica in relation to food. Um, the A stands for agribusiness development which again we want everybody to recognize that farming, fishing, it's business. Uh, you have to take a business approach so that's the A. The C really is about climate smart technologies so it's very important for us to recognize climate change but not just to recognize it to really incorporate the technology that we need to be climate resilient and the E is export expansion so we are focused on export you know we're a small island developing state um, we won't be able to grow everything to focus on everything so we want to make sure that we're picking winners and that we're looking for the markets and you know the beauty Debbie um, Jamaica is such a great country I mean all over the world you go people want our food because we just have a different taste profile the quality is so good so we're really focused on export so that's the new face of food food security agribusiness development climate smart technologies and export expansion yeah I'm very very happy to hear that one of the areas that I was actually looking to hear yesterday in your presentation was about the direction for young people mm -hmm. I was very happy when you brought it up and just to say that the ministry will be will be uh, directing 20% of all its benefit towards youth in agriculture yeah. that for me was a big plus as a young person you know with great interest in the sector yeah you know i think what we have seen is, is that young people are interested in agriculture young people are interested in farming and fishing but you have to provide the opportunity and you have to show them how they can grow how they can innovate and how they can get wealth from these areas so we are going to be very strategic and very dedicated in in relation to incorporating youth. So one, we have about a billion dollars to our production incentive regime, and we have earmarked 20% for youth, right? So it's very, very critical. So that's about 200 million that are going to be pumping into youth across farming and fishing. Other than that, we have said that 20% of all government land under the Ministry of Agriculture will be reserved for youth, who will get that wow. on preferential and preferential treatment. So we're going to publish in another few months all the land that is available, how young people can go about applying because it's always a perennial problem. You want to go into farming, where do you find mm -hmm. the land? But we're going to take it a step further. We're going to have a youth policy, but we've decided that the engagement with young people should be consistent. So we launched yesterday an advocate council. And it's no not an advocate, it's an advocate council. Ag yeah, so it's actually an agricultural gotcha. advocate council. We call it an advocate council. It's going to be made up of young people, and they will meet with me quarterly. And together, we will devise how do we get more young people involved, what are some of the problems, what new programs we need to come up with. Because oftentimes, we plan for youth. I don't believe in that. I believe you should plan with you. Mm, so we're that. going to get the young people as a part of the planning process. Yeah. One of the concerns a lot of the times when we hear young people should get involved in things is the access to it and what's required from a young person who may not have the kind of assets, collaterals, etc., yeah. to, to, to get access to funding, etc. Yeah. How are we gonna gonna fix that? Well, that's why you have to you have to do the special reservations. That's why you can't leave it up to chance. You can't allow them to compete with everybody else. And that's why with the land we've said this twenty percent is for youth. 
So you have to be between a certain age group to get it. And then it means that where we would normally ask somebody to come with a business plan, we will say to the youth, come with your ideas, let us develop the plan for you. Because yes, you have to have a, a business plan. And when we say we're reserved for youth, it doesn't just mean you get the land and do nothing, mm -hmm. right? Because we're doing this so that youth can earn income. They can recognize that farming and again in fishing that there are valid professions. Yeah. And they will have access to the same level of, you know, exports, etc. you know, as same any other established traditional. Same and the same, okay. and even more. Because, you know, one of the things that we're expanding is what we call the Rural Youth Economic Empowerment Program, a program we call REAP. And in that program, our young people get business development training, they get business plan training, and they get a startup grant of $50,000. And then when they're finished, they get business coaching for six months. And why that's important is because wow. we have found they need a mentorship. They need a handholding, yes. right? So we, we again, we're expanding that, and members of parliament who are in rural constituencies will get a chance to choose 10 young people, and then other young people can apply. We want to have at least 500 young people under the REAP with those hand-holding services, pair them with the land, pair them with the inputs, and, and watch, them, watch them prosper. I love that. Sabrina, I want to bring you in here because as a young woman, a young woman in the blue economy, actually, that's a big deal for me. I, I mean, you're, you're probably one of the first female young woman I'm, I'm meeting who is very big in our blue economy. Let's talk about your sector and uh, the direction of it uh, along with Minister's, Minister's presentation yesterday. Well, um, from his presentation, he spoke a lot about the fish sanctuaries, um, managing our fisheries, and he also spoke about the export expansion, which we're targeting sea cucumber um, in short order. Um, we recently completed surveys and assessments that has given us the go-ahead to explore this new fishery. And a part of growing and going forward is that we have to tap into new fisheries because for Jamaica right now our reef fish has been exploited, over exploited. Look into the new fisheries and sea cucumber is the the newest one upcoming. Sea cucumber? So tell me what that is because most people are like what is a sea cucumber? Because I know about land cucumber, I never hear about sea cucumber yet. Has hundreds of legs and they come in there are about 1500 species worldwide but the Caribbean waters host six to eight of those species and in Jamaica we we have identified at least seven and the, the benefit of a sea cucumber what, what do I use a sea cucumber to do I'm well, asking for persons who may <laughs> not have a clue about what a sea cucumber is sea cucumbers they are eaten a lot especially in high export value as well. Um, they use sea cucumber in aid of um, medical, as an additive to certain different medical um, medicines. Yeah. And it also is a part of hair care and skin care. So it's, it's a, a brand new, it's a new, f what's it's the a, it's, again? It's an addition to the face. New face yes. of food. New face of food. food. It is, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Sabrina. I love that. Guys, please remember to use the hashtag uh, new face of food when you are tweeting online or having the conversation on your social media platforms because we want to follow it, we want to incorporate, you want to hear your concerns, your questions, so we can have them discussed here. Khalil, I want to bring you in here, and you are super composed because you do this all the time. <laughs> you are big. You're big in uh, the small rumen and farming. Let's talk about your neck of the woods now and uh, what Minister said yesterday. I think that's a big deal about... Uh, the plans to roll out more for your uh, field? Um, well, yes, I'm pretty excited to actually have a minister now speak of livestock. That, yes. I think, is important. I think we've been under the, you know, we've been covered for a, for a long time. So what really came out for me is the whole registration for small ruminants. I think that is key for us kind of pulling the sector together to have that genetic database more quantified so we can get exported, export these animals overseas. Also, that rearrangement the Jamaica Deer Development Board to a livestock board, I think, will give attention to all these other small subsectors that is focused on livestock, dairy, beef, small ruminants, I think that's a great way for us to move forward. And access to genetics, I think that would be the cornerstone for us to kind of change the pace um, to, you know, allow a more genetic diversified food in the country and at the same time now improve some of these smaller farmers yeah. that really need access to genetics to be prepared for farmers. 
Yeah. So I believe that we're finally having some attention on livestock because I'm a team livestock guy. I mean, we, we know. <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, other small small farmers, women and farmers are very excited about, oh, yes, you know, what's to come for them. And for other persons who may just want to get started now in, in, in that business. Uh, so we have a new video right now uh, coming up for you. It is a video to say thanks to our farmers. Take a look. I asked Jamaicans to thank our farmers. This is what they had to say. Since COVID-19, I've been forced to really think about the farmers and all the work that they do. I thank you for your work as you continue to feed Jamaica and the world. Thank you, farmers. You are essential. Thank you to the farmers who continue to work each day to provide us with food and fiber. Isn't it amazing how less than 2% of us sustain the rest of us? We celebrate our food heroes every day. Thank you. Big up to the farmer who wake up before day every day to make sure say you and me can eat. We are nothing without food. Therefore, we are nothing without our farmers. Maximum respect. Thank you and your families for helping to feed us, especially in these tough times. Never ever doubt that what you do is meaningful. Farmers, you are heroes. Why I feel blessed to be able to drink a warm cup of coffee, you know. Thanks to each and every one of our coffee farmers for working so hard. You are the engines behind our economy. We appreciate your sacrifices, made for the betterment of our people and our country. Thank you and your families. Thank you. Wow, incredible. We really honor our everyday heroes. They are the ones making sure that our country continues. I believe, and I'm sure you'll agree with me as well, that this, this particular sector or industry, the agriculture and fishery, fisheries industry, is the most important industry because Jamaicans, nobody likes to be hungry, don't it? So we have to big them up for making sure that we are fed all the time and we have the kind of nutrients that we do need to operate at or best level now minister uh, sabrina said something very interesting earlier on about the survey uh yeah. for sea cucumbers let's yeah. talk about that yeah you know we, we we do take a very detailed process before deciding on a new fisheries and um sabrina literally is on the front line she goes out and assesses the stock and we, we we've been at this about six years looking at sea cucumber to determine whether we could run a viable industry and we would have partnered with our industrial fishers we would have done a pilot have them go out we would have done multiple surveys we survey the island shelf we surveyed pedro banks and we determined that we're, we're going to start with um basically the lowest possible viable amount which is about um 30 30 metric tons the reality is that you're getting now about 385 us dollars per kilogram for sea cucumber so it is it is it is really a, a high value industry and we think we can get about us 30 million dollars wow. from our sea cucumber industry so we're, we're, we're very excited but i just want people to, to rest assured that we did take a very detailed approach to determining our stock levels and we're going to take a sustainable approach to managing this new fishery yeah yeah Melissa, I'm going to stay with you for a second because as a farm chick, yes. <laughs> you know, I was looking forward to hearing about the position and the plans for a woman in agriculture. Yeah. Uh, I, I was very happy when you rolled out the Agriculture in Bloom to bring focus and to highlight some of our women in agriculture who are doing the same work as our men in the fields every day while juggling families yeah. and other day-to-day -day responsibilities. So let's talk about the ministry's plans for our women uh, going forward. Yeah. So, so again, we're being very strategic and very targeted. If, if you realize the imagery for the new face of food is woman, right? Because we want to send a very clear signal that to agriculture and fisheries, women are essential. And a lot of women have been doing very well, but their stories have not been told. Yes. Right? And part of what we've been doing through agriculture and Bloom is put out the stories. Put out the stories of women in fisheries, put out the stories of women in farming, and using that to motivate 
other women to get involved yes. and for young girls to look on and say I can have a valid profession in fisheries and in farming so we're going to continue our culture in bloom we launched it on International Women's Day and we've highlighted uh, three women so far and I mean we've gotten rave responses the last one with Sylvia Tomlinson who has a potato farm she does 300 acres and she has a business she imports I mean and she said you know just plant 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 something yeah, and we've been getting a lot of good traction so Every month we're going to be putting out a new story and use that to motivate our, our young women. But we're also taking a, a further approach. So this year we're looking to target 50 women. And what we want to do is to assess where they are in their agricultural journey, whether that is in farming or fisheries. And we're going to provide them with direct support. So what we want to do is to ensure that they level up. So whatever, ever, whatever level you are at, yeah. we're going to work with you to move you forward. So we're going to roll out that program and we're working with the Jamaican Rural Women Network and they've been doing a fantastic job to provide training for our women, especially around areas that um, we have seen uh, they have a competitive advantage in. And, and mm -hmm. finally, um, oftentimes we're not just talking about farming. One of the big things you're going to see this year is more women in communities getting mm -hmm. into mariculture. Yes. So, so, so what it is is growing in the sea. Yeah. Right, using the sea as your substrate, growing in the sea, and we're going to be targeting things like sea moss. Mm -hmm. And you know, Jamaican sea moss, Irish moss, whatever you want to call it, Debbie, it is yeah. now world renowned. We it have, is. It we is. have <laughs> a, a lot of social media people using it in I, their health routines. I use and it as well because it's good for immune it's systems. Excellent. It's it excellent. Is so we're going to be doing great. that. We're going to be doing oysters, yeah. right? And we're going to be setting up these systems, working with our sanctuaries, targeting women to be those people who will work in our mariculture. Yeah, role I want to bring in Sabrina here because that, that's, you know, mariculture is here in the kind of woods, Sabrina. Let's talk about how important it is to our sector and what it really means, what it, what it entails uh, for women who want to get into it. Well, as Minister Green said, it is what we're encouraging. For women, going out to sea for long periods of time may seem daunting, so doing the mariculture is you can do the mariculture right on the shore. You don't have to you don't have to venture more than five to ten feet to to the oyster racks and um, grow the sea moss because it and it's very it's not labor intensive and it does not require a lot of capital. So to have the youth plus women going in that direction, the we are pushing it. Yeah, yeah, I love that, uh, Khalil. Let's market for small ruminants in Jamaica um, you know it's uh, I, I grew up in Clarendon so I, growing up around goats was a thing for me I, I had two goats actually I call them black and Bello. black and Bello don't beat me up but <laughs> those are my two favorite comedians at the time you know so I grew up having goats as well and it was a part of our life um, I'm noticing that more young persons like yourself they're getting back into into you know raising goats raising cattle yes. um, let's talk about that market uh, for our young people and let's echo to them the importance of getting in on it now. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, all right. Let us look at the, the face, the new face of agriculture. Um, food security is one, and we import close to 1 million kgs of, of So we have an opportunity where we can grow the sector to capture at least a small percent of the market share, which will again translate improving the association. most gold farmers in All our right country. Now. So these are some of the parts that Absolutely. we should target and try to carry these farmers up to an next level. So the market is not only for meat. Absolutely. Dairy production goats is also a very big thing. We have few um, niche producers, um, Ruby Dairy, Cabra Ranch, getting into the milk production and doing yogurt and all these other things. I still think it's right here in town. You yeah. can go and get your goat milk in Lushusha. Right. So the value added is the cosmetics, lotion, soap. Yes, all the other byproducts from the goat, goat milk and it's all of these things, right? Absolutely. Yes. It's Sa Sabrina, let me let me ask you about about uh, <laughs> you mentioned something earlier in our on you know about um, oh, we were having the conversation about tilapia. We we're having a conversation about eating more freshwater fish and how really good it is. It tastes very good. And I have to big up the aqua farmers um, who are around Jamaica doing great work. And you know, let's talk about the versatility of freshwater fishes as well um that we don't normally hear about and we, we shy away from because it's, we, we don't hear it say this, the fish come from the sea you know let's talk about that well um for 
I personally like freshwater fish. It is neither here nor there to me. If I get it from the sea, if I get it. But when you go around and you, people are not, I don't think persons have been sensitized enough to say that, hey, there's nothing wrong with freshwater fish. Okay. And who knows, it, when it's produced and the genetics are great and everything is aligned, the, the fish may even taste better than some of the seawater fish. Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. so it's really about telling everybody and intro whether it is to introduce them by inviting them to somewhere where let us sample the freshwater fish let the you know and get them into it yeah it's one of the things debbie that, that we, we're embarking on this year yeah right we're starting a campaign starting next month to really promote the consumption of freshwater fish mm -hmm. because again when you think about food security you have to think about things that you have more control over so we really want to ramp up our aqua farms we want to wrap, ramp up aquaculture across the country and part of what we're doing is that we're going to put forward a new hatchery mm -hmm. so we're constructing a new hatchery so that we will have the material the fries that our our fishermen and our aqua farmers need to really ramp up their production so we actually have a project funded by the world bank um, we're going to be spending about 60 something million yeah. to build a brand new state of the art hatchery we're going to start this year it should take us two years but that will increase our production by uh, about 400 yeah. percent um, we're moving from about 1.5 million fries to 5 million fries when we're finished and that will drive up our freshwater fish production so what we're looking is that while we have to consume more but also we're going to be looking for the export markets yeah right so we have some great freshwater fish farmers mm -hmm. who really want to big them up and you know if you haven't tried it you see a lot of people and, and, and let me speak to whichever camera <laughs> a lot of people tried freshwater fish early out yes and they used to say boy it tastes like all sort of things right if you haven't tried it recently you need to give it a try again because Things have really evolved since then. I tell you, um, I have some people that cook it for you. You can't tell listen, the difference. Listen, so, if yeah. you ever stuff a freshwater fish, may I yeah. tell you, man, your dreams come true. That's yeah. what I'm going to say. Yeah. I want to stay in the blue economy, though, because we're getting some questions online. Uh, JS YouTube page, somebody's asking, how are we going to manage the sea cucumber, seeing as conch is on the brink and lobster uh, will soon follow? Um, the person saying maybe assess on all things from the sea. I, I mean, you can probably yeah, so, take what so you can. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're going to take some of the old approaches, but we've learned from some of the old approaches. So so I think each year we get better at management. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, that are, is non-negotiable is that we're going to do more surveys. It's very important that we consistently go out and check. And that is why we were able to intervene in relation to conch. Right, we're, we intervened, we stopped it for two years, we kept checking and we are now able to come back out. Right, So that's very, very important. And in coming back out, for example, what we did in Conk this year was to say there is a no harvest area. Yeah. So there's an area that you can't harvest Conk from mm -hmm. because based on our surveys, we still need replenishment in that yes. area. And we're going to take the same approach to sea cucumber. So the approach that we started, we've already are much better off because we did a much more detailed survey over more years so we already have a better idea of the numbers and we're going to put in strictures we're going to put in no harvest zones right that's very very important the other thing that we have to do a better job at that we're getting better but this requires collaboration it's working with the marine police mm -hmm. working with the jdf to really keep out outsiders off our banks the yes, reality yes. is that i what we saw happen to conk i don't think we can say that was because of our fisheries i think that was largely because of the poaching the mm -hmm. illegal unreported unregulated fishing people who come from all countries yes. and they just pry up on our banks no we've gotten better because we've gotten i think jd have got three boats so they're better able the first day the boat went out they caught a ship of people wow. with conk and lobster right wow. so we have to keep that up but what you will see, and, and I want people to rest assured, you will see a lot greater monitoring. You see the survey. And of course, the model will include a CES. And you know why that's important? What we do with the CES, Debbie, is to build out our sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. And out of the Kong CES, that's why we've been able to get up these conservation areas, and they have done tremendously well. So this sea cucumber fishery will give us more resources to expand what we already have, 
but we're targeting four new conservation areas and they take resources. Resources to police them, as Sabrina will it tell does. you, not easy, right? But so everything ties in. We're looking for sustainable yeah. fisheries. We have some more questions here uh, online. Somebody uh, whose name is Call Me Teams on Instagram is saying, Minister, let's get some sea moss turmeric on the U.S. market. I promise we won't have hands to sell. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, we're working on that. We're working on that. You know, um, two of them, and you say sea moss and turmeric, because two of them have largely been undeveloped industries. In other words, people just harvest them um, in the sea for the sea moss, right? Um, turmeric in the wild, literally. So what we're going to do now is cultivate. So we really haven't cultivated mm -hmm. turmeric and sea moss. That's what we're going to start to do. So I'm with you, Tim. Turmeric, we're putting in 20 acres. Um, we've already put in some of that for clean planting material. Then we'll give out to our farmers to ramp up turmeric production. And as you have heard, we're going to work with the sanctuaries to start some sea moss production. And already, one sanctuary is way ahead, the Alligator Head Foundation. They have done a partnership with the British Council. They're doing a vertical farm. They're going to do sea moss, blue crab, and I think it's oysters. So, yeah, Tim, we know people, people want the sea moss, people want the turmeric. Oh, I should say about turmeric. If you didn't hear, we have waived all administrative fees mm -hmm. for people to export turmeric. Yes. So we are removing some of the barriers. I love that. Khalil, I want to bring you in here because somebody on Instagram is asking, uh, they're saying that they want to get into goat farming. How can I get started? Well, well what I can say that the, the government over the years have invested a lot in developing the technical capacity. So, for example, RADA have a very good team that can give you all the required information you need. Um, Bodus have a lot of data, um, what I can say is there. And then the private sector, both, both, com both of the feed producers now are putting heavy investments into the sector for you to get access to both genetics and for feed. So I would tell everybody to start with the technical know, get a mentor, and that will be where you start. And then we can scale you up from there. The, the, the game has changed. No longer farmers doing tethering where they're leaving the animals out. We're providing the best facilities now for the best production, which is both climate smart and at the same time to improve production. Yeah. Um, access to genetics is here. Um, specialized feeding programs, for example, high product I work with is rolling out a total mixed ration system. And we're trying to push, especially with the private sector now, to invest in fodder production. Because that's one of our limiting factors, providing the feed for animals, which is mm -hmm. strictly fodder. So hoping to have more hay producers silage producers that can now drive this ruminant production not only sheep and goat but also for the beef industry yeah. so that is where we are so getting access guys it's 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 open up check with radar check with hypro um we have all the technical expertise to guide you properly into making this become a business yeah and let's talk about the insemination uh the, 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 that you're yeah gonna be giving so away for so free. yeah so you know one of the things we have to do is just, just ramp up our numbers yes. you know um Khalil spoke about some of, some of the the, the, the the facts in terms of how much we import, right? And over the last three years, we spent about US $3 million on the importation of, of, of mutton. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking to do is ramp up production. So we're going to do an artificial insemination drive, right? It's going to be led by our chief veterinary officer, Dr. Watson. And really what we're going to be doing is, is, is giving it away free, wow. right? So we have about 6,000 registered farmers and they can get semen and we will come in and go through the process and they can get between one to three straws and what we're trying to do is to increase the numbers mm -hmm. quickly so all of that will be free of course and then how do they do they call rather do they who do they call to get access to this well so again as Khalil said, RADA has a full rollout, right? But you will hear more details about the program. Dr. Watson and the Veterinary Services Unit will give a full briefing in relation to how you access, how, who is going to come and visit, what happens. Yeah. So just stay tuned. A lot of exciting information this year from the ministry. All right. Uh, I know you said stay tuned, but Cabra, Cabra has a question. Cabra Ranch from uh, JIS YouTube is asking, what is our approach to importing animals, especially in small ruminant sector? Well, our approach is very careful, mm -hmm. right? Um, clearly, part of what we have to do, we have to ensure that whatever, if we're going to import animals, we have to ensure that it goes through the highest level of veterinary checks because we do not want diseases in our island. And we've seen what has happened to other countries where diseases come in and wipe out their sector. We've seen it right across the livestock sector. And one of the good things, we have been able to really keep our country 
free from a lot of those diseases. I want to keep it that way. So it's a, it's a very detailed process. I would say to everybody, contact the veterinary services unit if you are looking to import animals. Um, we have very strict vetting guidelines in relation to where they can come from, the checks that have to be done. Oftentimes, all veterinary office will have to go to the place and visit to ensure that they're keeping with the protocols. Yeah. One of the good things is that we do have great genetics here. Yes. Right? And I think we have to make those genetics more available. And we just need more farmers to appreciate that gone are the days when you leave these things to chance. Right? The new face of agriculture is technology driven. Mm -hmm. Hence the artificial insemination program. So gone are the days where you just leave it and what happened, what happened? No. Mm -hmm. We have passed that. We have the expertise here. We can help you get the breeze that you need, get better goats, get better sheep. We can work with you. Yeah. We made our diaspora people very happy recently by sending some mangoes to them because <laughs> I think we have a lot of Jamaicans overseas who were there during the mango season. Said, Lord, I wish I could not get that Julie mango. Yeah. And not only did Floyd shock us by calling, um, Minister Floyd shock us by calling um, our beloved Julie mango St. Julian that uh, trended on Twitter, which was a new thing for a lot of us because we did not know that the Julie mango is actually St. Julian. You know, but, but uh, for, for many people, it was the first time that they actually could get uh, or Jamaican mangoes overseas. So, so let's talk about that. Yeah, we, 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 we are really trying to, again, ramp up exports. And for, for years, especially those in the UK, we had a self-imposed ban for seven years. In the US, we only started shipping mangoes again to the US in 2019. That was after 20 years. Now, if you've traveled, if you've tasted other mangoes, you know this is not talk. Jamaica has the best mangoes in the world. Mm -hmm. Our flavor profile is the best. East Indian and St. Julian, our Julie mango, is the best. So what we have been doing is working with our farmers, working with our exporters. When we started mangoes in 2019, we did 1,300 boxes and we were excited. Last year, we did 9,000 boxes. The season has just started and we're already at 2,000 boxes going wow. up. And we're doing US and the UK. And we're looking to build a hot water plant this year, right, um, through public-private partnership. And that will ramp up the amount of mangoes we can send abroad. So I say to my diaspora people, I know you're watching. I know some of you went out and got your mangoes and you loved it. More is on the way, more is on the way. But more importantly, for this year, we've targeted 128 million to put in the infrastructure that is roads, water, to develop 1,000 acres of mango orchards. And what we want, we're going to put in the infrastructure, but we want members of the private sector to partner with us to build out these orchards. So some of you who are watching now, it's a great business idea, great business venture. You have a ready market. We have access to the US and the UK, and we're nowhere near able to fill the demand. So invest in mangoes, invest in, well, let's just talk about mangoes. We're going to be building out Akis as well. Right, we have seen despite COVID 19, we saw a rise in the amount of Akis we exported by 7%. We exported US $31 million worth of Akis last year. We want to put in a thousand acres of Aki, we want the private sector to come on board. Significant demand for breadfruit, mm -hmm. right? We want the private sector to work with us to build out some orchards. Eggs, chicken, flour, potatoes, and rice are dirt cheap, he says. What can we do to drive down the price of these in Jamaica and stabilize the price? Well, you know, I, I, it, it's, uh, he starts from a position that uh, I don't know if I'd agree with. But I, I'll, I'll take the bigger picture. Um, how do we moderate, drive down the price? I think over the years, um, our farmers have been doing better. A lot of it has to do with efficiency. A lot of it has to do with productivity, right? You know, last year we had the highest level of egg production that we've ever seen. Our egg, our egg production grew by 24%. Mm -hmm. I think our farmers are just getting better at it. They're understanding the technology. They're building better houses. It, it, it is working. Same thing in relation to chicken meat production. Last year we had the highest, not 2020, 2019, we had the highest level of production ever. As we continue to get better at production, as we continue to put in new technology, you see now people are using solar powered chicken houses. Yes. As we drive down the costs, we'll be able to drive down the overall costs and also to increase the profit margins, which is very, very important. So I think 
where the ministry comes in is to continuously work with our farmers to get them more efficient, to get them more productive. Normally when you do that, then you are able to have better costs. Now I think more of our companies, more of our farmers recognize that you can't be producing just for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. You can't just see Jamaica as your marketplace. Yes. You have to look broader. We have an open marketing caricom that we haven't taken advantage of. And chicken is one of those things that if we continue in terms of the advances, you know, CB is investing uh, $15 billion in a state-of-the-art facility called the Nest. And, you know, Jamaica Broilers continues to invest and to develop new technology. If we keep that up, I think you will see us be able to compete right across the world. And we're pushing our farmers to say, and our fishers, listen, we can't just think about Jamaica. You can't think about the man next door. Think about the person that is producing in another country what are they doing how can we adapt those practices to get it cheaper absolutely absolutely uh minister i want to talk about just quickly uh, before we get into you know the bush doctor is here, here. <laughs> the the research the research component of place i'm very happy that you put emphasis on that because if we're to look at food sustainability and i'm thinking about my grandchildren that's how far my mind is when i think about sustainability um let's let's drive home the importance of the investment that we have made to re-energize yeah. bodies and, and other research facilities. Yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, you know research is critical. Yeah. And um, I, I don't think we have placed enough emphasis on it in the past few years. And um, we have been changing that over the last three years, right? So we have a borders redevelopment program. I've always said your agricultural sector will not advance past your research agenda. Your research agenda has to lead your sector. So what we've done this year, we've put earmarked $150 million to continue our borders redevelopment. For example, we're putting a high-tech dairy system, right? We're putting a new piggery, and that feeds into how we will engage the farmers. Yes. So in total, over the last three years, we've invested about $750 million in redeveloping borders and our research stations. And we're going to do more. So over the next 10 years, we've earmarked $5.4 billion because we want to drive up our research centers. We want to get our nurseries up to the state of the art. We want to ensure that we're focusing on our seed production and our seed banks and building out commercial seed production mm -hmm. right here in Jamaica. We want to look at things like soil health. All of that is important. And as you look to develop new fisheries, research is critical. How do we ensure that we're being most productive in growing CMOS? Should we be looking at new varieties? Mm -hmm. So, you know, all that Sabrina does when she goes out to dive, that's part of her research agenda. Yes. Right? Because it's very important that we're putting in that work. And, you know, it's not, it doesn't look fancy sometimes, and, but we have to put the money into it to yeah. get the results. We yeah. have to do it. Yeah. Uh, you, you announced yesterday a number of, uh, you know, new resources for communities and parishes, new tractors, you know, uh, yeah. A walk in fridge, that kind of thing. And for <laughs> yeah. you know, when Jamaica people hear walk in fridge, I'm getting excited, <laughs> you know, and something that you can actually monitor as well with your phones, which speaks to our advancement with the technology, of course. Yeah. Um, so, so how can our farmers, our community based farmers, or parish farmers take advantage of these new resources for them? Yeah, so we're going to be rolling out this year, um, over the next 18 months, uh, cold chain storage network facilities. We're going to be targeting six highly productive areas. So RADA uh, has done a very good job. They know the areas. They know the areas that we have significant loss. We, we lose about 30% of what we produce because of a lack of cold storage facilities. So we're going to target those areas that we have high production, high losses. And what we're going to do, we're going to put in modular mobile cold storage facilities. They're going to be solar powered, so we don't nice. have to worry about costs. Um, of course, we're going to pair that with refrigerated trucks so you can move your produce from your cold storage to the marketplace and we're going to put in data loggers so you can monitor what's happening yes. temperature you can ensure that you know it's at the right level and you're going to be able to monitor that remotely so we're starting the program this year it will be for 18 months um it's going to cost us about 157 million dollars and thankfully we've gotten support from the people and the government of morocco nice so they're going to contribute a grant of 945,000 US dollars. So yeah. um, we're very, very happy for that. But storage has been a long-standing challenge and something that I said as minister we have to fix. Yes. One of the main pests for a lot of farmers is pretty larceny and other, you know, illegal <laughs> illegalities, yeah. right? It's something that I, I, I've also hear a lot of, or heard a lot of female farmers complain about as well because, 
you know, we as females, we, we sometimes, yeah. we're, we, we, we want support in that area. So let's talk about the moves to, to protect our yeah. farmers you from know, this. Thankfully, we've been doing better, but we still have a far way to go. Yeah. Um, last year, we saw a 60% rise in arrests. Our period of last year, we moved from 72 in uh, 2019 to 114 um, last year, and we did more operations. What we've done is that we've gotten the JCF, the Jamaica Constable Force, to treat period of last as a major crime. That allows us to build out the resources around it. So we now have seven divisions with period of last in units that are staffed with about five police officers, and they have a vehicle. So we've been seeing more operations. We've moved from 200 operations in 2019 to 800 operations last year. Year. We're going to continue that. What we want to do this year is put more boots on the ground. So we mm -hmm. want to roll out a pilot of an agricultural warning program, which for everybody it's like a district constable, but focused on agriculture and agricultural yes. produce. And we're going to target the markets. We have to ensure some of the things like traceability, being able to have a register of small ruminants, those things will help. But pray the last thing for us is, is a big concern of the ministry and we will continue to work and I say to everybody if you're having challenges please oftentimes I know we went through a period where we stopped reporting because we got frustrated and we said the police not doing nothing and nobody not going to come mm -hmm. we are moving past that but if you don't report we can't treat with it so please contact the Predator Last and Prevention Unit contact the JCF we have Bishop Gary Welsh is very committed and I say to my female farmers one of the things we do are security visits so we can come and assess yes your area and if you're going into small ruminants please have our prayer last unit come out and look where you're setting it up look at your fencing tell you what you can do because the reality is that the first thing is to see how you can prevent it yes love that thank you so much minister khalil thank you so much sabrina thank you thank you so much the honorable floyd green for having the conversation i mean i wish we had more time to discuss because there's yeah. so many things to discuss yeah, but as you know uh, our minister and uh, the ministry's social media pages are very active they're very willing to hear from you so make sure that you do reach out to them via social media at m-o-a-f-j-m also rada j-m also you can reach out at n-f-a jamaica and at floyd green he's very responsive floyd green jamaica that is and you can also call 876-927-1731 the new face of food is a complete focus on food security agribusiness development, climate smart technologies, and export expansion. Thank you all so much for joining us. And before we go, we did promise you that we have the Bush doctor himself in the house to take us out, our very own Jamaican farmer superstar, the man with ambition, the man with a plan, Yaksta and the Scallywags. Blessings, 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 everybody. Yeah. Yeah. New face of food. Eat what we grow, grow what we eat. So big up everybody. Big up God. As far as I'm started. Uh, big up Debbie. You know. Yeah, man, big up the whole massive team. We big up the Scalawags. Um, it's a pleasure to have me here. And it's a pleasure to be here. You don't know. Um, we're in the era of trees and plants. And Jamaica booming. Agriculture booming. Big up Flight Green. Big up my RG. Yes, I. So are ready? Because I ready, you know. One. Bush Lord. Yeah, yeah.
know where I'm from. Oh yeah, oh whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh. Cause the gang know where I'm from. This place full of skills, but this skill not too bright. Then that on the roadside get terrorized. They put your fruit tree, time for them right. We see a bit means don't walk at night. We use of a mind, but never get mine. Some got on doctor, some go by a right, some prone to the guns, and that cut them chimes. Lord, ah, uh, eh, them call it danger zone. Our breathing grounds are place for the dumb. Some call it slums when crimes are this way. Innocent get gunned dumb. We call it. Cause the ghetto where I'm from. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh. Cause the ghetto where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. Down in the willow. I see dreams. I look into the mirror, oh, 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 yeah, and I see me, yeah. I say, I can, and you can, we can be something. The bad man, the bad man, they can be something. So never let nobody hold you down. Oh, yeah, never let nobody hold you down. Hey. They're just so under breathing, groans are a place for the dumb. Some call it slums with crimes are place where innocent get gone dumb. Take it away. Oh, yes. Eat what we grow. Big up, Virg. Big up, God. Them on the mic. Yeah. All right. Hope Gardens has the hope. You know? All right now. This one is called Boogie Woogie. Mr. Flyde, I am your guest. I want your best right now. Everybody over the song. Ready? All right. Da 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 in here, I'll put my golden locks. All right now, touch out at the house to the beach to relax. Mr. Young Man judge with a goat and a lass. Walk one, Georgie. Eh. I beg you a giant pull out my cheese box. Morning, Miss Jai was piling at the pot. I wish she tell me, I can yam breadfruit, save mine till I'm back. Agriculture, have a big farm at the top. We'd watch up. Woogie, woogie, woogie. Why won't you move your legs, boy? Nobody ramp with me, ya. Yeah. Ooh, boogie, woogie, woogie, cha. Why won't you move your legs, good Lord? Uh. Hey, I wanna feel, I wanna feel, I wanna feel, I wanna feel, I wanna feel sweet. Uh. Feel sweet. Feel, I wanna feel, I wanna feel, I wanna feel, I wanna feel sweet. When me stand on the rhythm and step on the big bed. Ready it now. When you ready? Take a look. Rum on me can see you make me want be. Cho, sure. I find my fence wheel out my waist. But we are rough dogs, I still take a risk. I wish you tell me. A girl thing one stone go lick your pitney. She dis me, but boogie woogie woogie. Cho, sure. why won't you move your legs, boy? No matter I'm with me, yeah. Ooh, boogie woogie woogie. Why won't you move your legs? Good Lord, uh. so, I wanna feel, I wanna. Yeah, I wanna feel, I wanna. Hey, I wanna feel, I wanna. All right. Me love the sound you hit a chop. Tougher than a kangara. So, me spending bar with Shelly flat. Tougher than a kangara. Oh Lord, ah, uh. oh Mister Skanky Doo, Skanky Doodle. Are we stepping at Doodle? No, a black smooth cup noodle. Oh Lord, Skanky Doo, Skanky. Back with that. 
Everybody now. Everybody. 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 Come, sir. Come, sir. Come, sir. Come, sir. Push up behind. Push up behind. Push up behind. All right now. Blow it gum. 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 One more time now. Second now. Boogie, boogie, boogie. Chop. Why won't you move your legs, boy? Nobody ramp with me, ya. Yeah. Ooh, boogie, woogie, woogie. Why won't you move your legs? Good load, ah. Play up. Boogie, 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 boogie. Boogie, 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 boogie. Boogie, 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 boogie. Lord God, give me a clap, no man. So how is agriculture? Good? Since, since January 15th, how has agriculture been now? For the youth, them. Them love it? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So here we go now. I have one more. Yeah, man, can everybody start selling markets when I buy full coop? So you know what thing go? Zin? So here we go now. Somebody come hold my cap. Oh. Make up, yeah. Made that get hot. Yeah, I can hold this stuff. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. It boot new, so if you see my move, look at two, look at two up on me, you know? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna want anybody to watch my foot now. So here I go now. Why is the finale back? Go to ambitious. Chew it out. Ready up. Yes, sir. Make sure my glow for the one I seen. All right. Two, two, two. Push Excuse me, not be a guns. Me not seek validation. Boast and admiration from you now your patrons. Boasting about name brands, but cast over eight grand. Debbie of the same ones for the cars of a straight pants. Debbie, why own a Ferrari with nowhere to park it? Why shop a Louis V when there is a target? No, my eye for my face. The two minds me a save it. Them go fendi for trendy. Fly the account no empty. Your mother, I hear cause of a man. Pull it up. Yeah, man. All right now, everybody have to go to my ambition dance now, see? So we have sprinkle seeds, see? So now go dip, so, and chew seeds, dip. Chew seeds, dip. All right. Two, 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 a bush loader. Hey, Floyd, how you go? Excuse me, not be a Me not seek validation, toast and admiration. From you now, your patrons boasting about name brands, but cast over eight grand. When me searching of the same ones, but the cast of a straight pants. Hey, why own a Ferrari with nowhere to park it? Why shop a Louis V when there is a target? Hey, no, my eye for my face. The two minds me a save Them go fend me for trendy. Bank account can yeah, empty. Two seeds. I hear cause of a man. Link my wife on my wife. Cause when inside girl breathe up. Child support that lead to. Cho. A farming over flossing. Go so. Investment over graphing. In every chance for my seeds. Oh. Me all right being mean. If you are 50 you never make a brings get used. Means you're poor so your kids next to. Employment to use as a big excuse. You want him grow so him get See him 24 hours so what you got to Bang and Raji fight their own toes We keep getting wealthy Lana still on my one piece Cho! Nobody watch how my pants need Soon start supply Walgreens Tax large when the plant trees Your flight could no food burger go up there You are you are you are you are you sir And it's a vehicle with Billy from the Buller Lord God, so I eat the cassava. Link my wife for me. What do you think, the man? Child support that little. 
A farming over block, investment over broffin, inheritance for my seeds. Oh, take it down low. Do the year tempting, me still watch how me spending. Nine gold, twelve gold, kid. Billions when them get big. Build up a ranch and rent it. Ground produce more plenty. Ice party vending. Each bag cost empty. Bad na draw me fix mine. Me invest back in a bit kind. Blockchain virtual goal. Demands inflate in time. Me invest in a my merch. Give what to which church. Fast I go look at work. Rub my farm in the dirt. Over there, so. Lord God, come and cura, 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 come and cura. Hey, so me go be the full coop. Fuck a skill and burn some coal to. Yeah, go school and shall go take a loan out. For put a box on the road. Hey, so farming over flossing. Investment over brafin. Come in, get every time to me see. So, ready? Come in, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Come in, Debbie, come in, Debbie, man, come in. Get too nice behind the camera, Debbie. Come, 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 Debbie, man. Come, where you go? Go, where you go? Farming over, blasting. Investment over. Watch me now, watch me now. See back here. Take out some seed. Yeah. Ready? Two, three. Seed. 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 All right. Seed. 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 Show them, show them, show them, show them. Show them. Shovel, shovel, shovel. All right now. Earth bar, earth bar, earth bar. Give me your William. Go sir, go sir, go sir, go sir, go sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, a farming over blasting. Investment over graphing. In every time for me seeds all. Me all right being mean. Agriculture is the way to go. The best expo. Who said the best put up an answer? Come, sir. Better future. Better Jamaica. Eakers. 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 Sure. Eakers. Full group. Full group. Bush. 